All right. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, March 20th, 2024, Northampton Urban Forestry Commission meeting. Um, the meeting is being recorded. Uh, I do not see any members of the public. There is no one in the waiting room at the moment, so we'll just um, dispense with public comment for the moment. Uh, Kent also will not be here. So, and uh, um, so review and approve the minutes of 3 6 2024. I don't know if folks had a chance to read them. If you didn't, if you did, I, I have a few comments, but. I'll let other people finish before we make the comments. I, I've read them. No okay. comment. All right. Oh, actually, there I were. Read, yeah. oh. Go ahead, Jen. I read them, but I do have a comment. Yeah. I'm still reading them. I'm done. Okay. Rich, you're done. All right. Who uh I'm waiting for David. Yeah, I I'm finished too. Next. Okay. Uh um, you can go first. Okay. Sure. I, I just thought that in the first section in the tree warden's report about moving the poll, um, do we want to have the address in there? There's no location, it just talks about that was my only comment. And I don't know what the address is. <laughs> that was the Turkey Hill Road place. Yeah, C correct. Yep, that was my comment. I don't. We, I don't have an, the actual house number because there isn't a house yet. So I, we can, can just, just say, say at the end of Turkey Hill Road. Oh yeah, regarding the Turkey Hill Road poll uh, petition move, it should be poll petition. Oh, not poll position. Oh, huh. <laughs> right. And usually I, I sent these, I didn't have time to, I usually proof them. So that's, I didn't have a chance to, um, Bonnie sent them to me in time. So it's no one's fault, but my own, um, the next, the next comment is, um, in that same sentence, it should say public, uh, shade tree hearing may be held in April mm -hmm. because it's unsure if we're actually, uh, I'm unsure. The poll petition, I believe, passed, but I'm unsure if they're going to need the hearing uh, in April or May. Um, remove uh, in the same underneath the same bullet says remove all the ash trees, uh, or remove all the thirteen ash trees. However, it works. It works that way. But uh, next sentence say we'll get the trench permit. Just so, so just for uh, some context as to what we're talking about. Uh, um, okay. Uh, our Tree City USA Award. It is not our ninth year. It's actually, I think it's our 20, I don't know if it's our 25th or 24th year. Hmm. It, it's but I think the ninth is, uh, pertains to the growth award. So this should you should. Um, oh, yeah. well, which one were you, weren't you talking about the growth award? Because I remember asking a question. Yes, about that. yes, the growth award. And I didn't get the answer to your question. I'm sorry. I will get it for you, though. But yes, the growth award is this is our this is our seventh or eighth year getting the growth award. I can't remember off the top of my head. So it wouldn't it shouldn't say Tree City USA. It yes, it, 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 the growth award is part of Tree City USA. Oh, so it should say uh, finished our Tree City USA application. Uh, this will be our um, X year of receiving this award, along with so many years of the growth award. So, if, if the commission is okay, we'll make a motion that I can fix this after, um, just to get the right data in there to give it to Bonnie. That's all. Okay. Um. See anything? Anything? Anyone see anything else? I just had one little other sure. clarifying thing under the tree warden report. Um, yes. the second bullet point. Yes. 
I think it should just say loss of trees due to windstorm on such and such a date. Okay. I don't remember what that date was, but I'm sure you have it. Uh, it was it was Mar March 1st. Uh. And then one other thing that I noticed is that up above, there were says staff and visitors. We didn't have any visitors at the last meeting. We had Kent. I mean, Kent's a visitor, but Kent's sort of like an extension. Uh, Jackie wasn't there. Uh, neither was Jackie Balance. But Austin Ford tuned in later on after the meeting was rolling along. So I think Jackie Balance and Jacqueline McCreener, they can be taken off of that. Hmm. From what I remember. Any other comments? All right. So what I like to do is I'm going to make a motion to accept the minutes as revised. Um, with the uh, commission's approval, I will correct the Tree City USA application uh, and growth award um, bulleted point. I just need a second if someone would be so kind to. I'll second. Yes, thank you. Unless some, all right. Any discussion on the motion? No discussion. Okay, Bonnie, when you get a sec, could you do a roll call, please? Okay, Rich Parsoletti? Yes. Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jen? Yep. David? Yes. And Richard? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Motion carries. Just for Tree City USA. I can look it up quickly. In a I have to go into our portal, though. So, okay. All right. So moving, uh, moving along. Uh, so chair report, tree warden report. So the tree warden report. Um, the poll petition, from what I understand, was approved on top of Turkey Hill. So we will be having a public shade tree hearing at some point in the future. I don't know when. They haven't contacted me to go back and look at the, the uh, remaining trees. Uh, I think what happens now, the poll petition has been approved. The engineering department for national grid um, will actually um, re-engineer the, where the line runs. So that takes time on their part. They'll come back with their engineer diagram. It, it then gets approved by um, their local uh, line folks because they're the ones going to be putting the pole in and then, They'll be that's when they'll come to me and say we need to cut we'd like to cut x y and z so um i also got a um a request from national grid to remove a sugar maple on north farms road there is a new house that was built on north farms road uh, sort of right before if you're familiar with volunteers farm so right before Volunteer's Farm, there's a stone wall there. There's a new driveway that goes, it's a shared driveway. It goes down in the back, goes down the hill. There's a house in there. And they have uh, quite a, a set of uh, solar panels. So they need to upgrade the overhead utility to basically take the energy from the panels back to the, to, uh, the, the grid's uh, distribution system. And there's a tree on the corner there that we originally had tree protection on. It's a sugar maple. It's in it's in poor condition. It has uh twenty five percent maybe life ground ratio. So I I have no issue with um you know doing a, a public shade. I, I don't know if I'm going to do a public shade tree hearing on it. I may not even need to because of its poor condition. It just may end up being removed. Um, we tried to save it, but when we put the tree protection around it when they built the driveway. Um, as the summer progressed, we realized that the tree was continuing to go in decline. Mm. So um, it's not, unfortunately, I don't think it's long for um, North Farms Road. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. How big is it? Um, 20, it's 20, I don't know, like 26 inches probably. Pretty big. It is pretty big. And it's unfortunately where it's located, it was a volunteer. It grew out of the stone wall. And then it sort of became a tree. So the whole base of the tree has large rocks embedded in the flare and everything. So mm. I on the backside. So I just 
I think it's probably best if we take it down. Um, you know, th these these kind of removals I don't mind because the can the tree are in the trees are in poor condition or critical conditions. Uh, it's the ones that are healthy that kind of bother me because there's that forever conversation about conflict between our urban canopy and um you know people citing solar on their homes and actually having to have uh upgrades um to uh to the utility like they did on ryan road they had to upgrade the whole utility that went up and down ryan road all the way to the substation on pine street to support um con ed's uh solar farm at uh, the old oh. gravel bank so they had to actually make taller poles which oh. changes the um, distribution lines, which actually touches trees and tree parts that it didn't touch before, because instead of having like 35 to 40 foot poles, you're having 55 foot poles. Mm -hmm. So it's, and I think that's going to be an ongoing challenge as we continue to move towards, um, you know, trying to uh, create a green energy network or increase our green energy um, capabilities, because the grid will have to continue to be upgraded. So it's, you know, I just, you know, one, one pole, one set, one tree at a time, I guess. So. The good news about that is that the wires will be higher. So eventually we'd be able to plant bigger trees underneath it. Well, that is, that would be ideal, but the other utilities sort of stay at the same height. Oh, darn. And line clearance doesn't happen for uh, Verizon or um uh, G, uh you know uh comcast or g4s or any of those other telecommunication companies uh they re they rely solely upon national grid to clear above them so when we have a problem where there's like a, a tree or a limb that's laying on a telephone or a cable wire um national grid they don't touch it um uh, we end up having to deal with it oh really yeah huh. yeah so uh, but typically, I we you know that's one of the things that our contractor does, which is good. Well, um, that site on North Farms Road is that near that area, but not under the line. Is that a place where we could plant another tree? Not really, because it, I mean you could, but it's sort of the it, it's it's hard to describe. You could take a right up there, but the the road is the pitch from the edge of the road goes very steep up to a rock wall, and then the tree is on the very top. So it's on the, the left side or the right side of the it's road on the road? right side. You'll if you take a ride up there, you'll see it. It has tree protection, uh okay. uh trunk protection or trunk armor around it. Mm -hmm. Um let's see. Uh last week I went to on Tuesday, I met with the tree warden from the city of West Springfield and their tree committee and um spent a about two hours with them in the afternoon and did a presentation uh, for them on um, tree, um, what did I call it? It's uh, urban, uh, oh my Lord, I changed the name of the, I changed the name of the PowerPoint. Um, urban and community forestry, or urban and community forestry 322. So instead of urban and community forestry 101, it was urban and community forestry 322. And I picked 322 so I wouldn't duplicate any uh, class number from any of the local universities. So, um, But I was invited to go there and just sort of talk about, um, uh, you know, tree boards, tree bylaws, tree warden um, duties, um, some of the things that, uh, you know, a lot of the big things that we've done as a commission together and before when I was not on the commission, um, where it's all been today, it's sort of like a remix of what I did at the tree steward training last year. Um, and one, one of their committee members was there and they asked me if I would ever, if I would come and give them a presentation. So it just happened to be was last Tuesday. So it was, in, it was, uh, it was interesting there, you know, they are, um, they are a, a young, uh, younger, um, younger what i mean i don't mean in uh, a physical age but i mean the commit the committee itself or the commission itself has uh i don't think um has been around for a long period of time and they have a new tree warden marcus he's very nice he used to work in the west springfield uh, sorry springfield under alex sherman and uh, ed casey 
So he's got a um, he's got a really great group of people to work with. So he's fortunate, like I am, to work with a great group of people like yourself. So it was fun. So, um, and um, the other things I have to talk about are in the other parts of the um, uh, the other parts of our meeting. Um, the other the um, the other thing, too, is that uh, just a little bit about Main Street redesign. So Mass DOT is reviewing the 75% design, um, which they will uh, eventually release release it. 75% um, design will be available uh, once it's been agreed to by Mass DOT on the Planning and Sustainability's website. So that really shows um, in more detail um you know, uh, uh, the, the tree planting locations, the remaining, the trees to be, uh, the trees that will be, uh, I believe the trees will, that will be remaining. So, um, if anyone happens to ask you, um, you know, can we, um, where can we see this and when can we, uh, see the 75% design? The answer is, is I don't exactly know. Mass DOT sometimes takes a month. Sometimes they take two months to review this before they come back to the community with their, final thoughts and comments. And then it's sort of a, a negotiation between mass DOT and the municipality that they're working with because the municipality has certain things they like to see. And then mass DOT obviously has its own design parameters that it has to abide by. So it's sort of a negotiation. Um, but um, once that's up and running, I'll just, once that's up, I'll send you a link to it. So you can all, you can all look at it. And that's all I really have to report. Anyone have any questions? Molly. Question. Yes. Um, did the spotted lantern fly letter ever get out yet? Did not. Did not. I am Did it get reviewed by the mayor? It got oh, reviewed. Oh, did we ever um shorten it? I guess it's now it's a press release, right? That's the thing. Yes, that... it's gonna be and... a press release, and that has not that has not come across in my emails. Yeah. Yeah, Sue and I were working on trying to shorten it, and uh, it was, well, I found it impossible to get below, like, 200 words. Okay. All I'm right. sorry, Rich, much, does sir? it, what is the word limit, Molly and Rich? Somebody um, said 100. Yeah, I mean, Sue, I mean, I think, Sue, if you were to go back to a, I think the best way to do it is go back to a press release, like we had for Arbor Day last year, and we yeah. can just count. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay. I thought they were longer, but okay. No, it's probably longer. Press I mean, I I'm not I'm not um an expert on how long press release. I mean, a press release can be very long, but I think that you lose people's interest when it becomes too long. So Well, the thing, I don't know, with this, there's a lot of information that we're trying to convey. It's not just announcing an event and a date. Yes. You yes. know, so I don't know what else I could possibly cut out. Okay. Well, if you can, do you want to, do you have, do you have it in some kind of a draft form? You can send it to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just send me an email and we'll, right. we'll, uh, we'll look at it. And then okay. we'll go. Probably there. did a good job of chopping it down a bit. Yeah. A little right. bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would be, it would be really nice if everyone in Massachusetts got the MDAR, um, uh, the MDAR, uh, you know, press releases they put out or the, uh, the hort horticultural newsletters that they put out because they're really handy, but a lot of people just don't, people just don't pay attention to it, I guess, or they don't, it's not necessarily right in front of them. Um, mm -hmm. it's just, we're, we're, uh, we're, we, we live and breathe and eat it. So it's, we see it, we understand it. And that's so. why I was hoping the letter, you know, would go to specific people at those yeah, addresses. I, I, I again, that, that is, I will, the, the press release would probably be an easy, quick lift. The letter might be a little different. That's the only thing. So I just want to make sure that we do something and not and do instead of doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, please send that to me. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. Any other questions before we move on? None. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, setback tree planting program. So since our last meeting, I took, um, the changes from, I'm not going to share, but this 
you probably can't even see it. This document that I scribbled all over, which is the setback brochure. Hmm. Um, and I actually extrapolated all the text. I put it in a Word doc and I fiddled with it until um, it looked like what we agreed upon. Um, and then I forwarded, uh, and then I emailed Sue, and Sue gave me some, also some a text for some of the sections um, that Sue um, was working on. And I put it all together and sent it to Marcus Printing. Um, they were not able to get it into a draft form for us to see today, but I will have a draft for Monday. So what I can do is I can send you all the draft. You can all review it. And if you have any questions, you can just send me singly an email, please. And I will answer them. My goal would be to have um, a, uh, a a working draft that everyone is pretty pretty good with for next, our, our April uh, meeting, our first meeting in April. So I also um, did get a whole... Uh, a, uh, Dave uh, from Marcus Printing was in my office dropping something else off. And so I was able to talk to him about uh, the setback planting brochure. And he was checking to see because we had talked about either taking this document and sort of folding it with a trifold and actually having a little um, piece of paper sticking up out of the top like this. And it would have a, sorry, you can't really see that, but it's just, you know, it would be cut out. And people, you can hang it off the door hanger and then it'll be part of the trifold. They don't have a die big enough to do that separately, but they do have a die, metal press punch die that can actually punch a, it, will, it would make a little um, trifold. It would hold the folder and it would be something we could use for other things. So you would have your trifold document, like I have explained in the past, the trifold document would would slide into this little sleeve that would hang off of a door. So um, the only thing that I was, you know, I'm wondering, and I haven't given much thought to it, is that what do you what do you want the you know the trifold? We can have the trifold. Um, sorry, the trifold hang or the holder, the hanger, just can be plain and say nothing, and just you would see like uh, again. I, I didn't do a screen share because it's kind of hard. Why is this not working? Anyways, hmm. the the I actual think it's because your background is blurred. Oh well, let me fix that. But then I then you got to do some mirror thing so you can read it. I don't know. I don't know. Let me see. Yeah, Burma. it may not be worth messing around. All right, hold on. There we go. Okay, so basically, here's an example. Here's the front cover of this, right? So if we put it in a Manila envelope you would see something like this and that's and then there would be the hanger part would be up here and then people would take this and they would pull this trifold out and they would read it and then they would contact us presumably so my question to you is that on this portion of the trifold down here do we want this to say something the city of northampton urban forestry tree initiative or something on that lower part Hmm. And I'm I'm gonna look through my emails to see if I can find. They did send me a um, he did send me um a cut of what this would look like. I just need to find it. Would it cost a lot more to add something onto that? Onto uh, pro plan? Probably, probably not. Um, probably not. Let me see if uh. I think it should have like a something on it you know, a little, you know, something that would be generic enough that we could reuse it. What yeah. about the city of Northampton logo? Yeah, you mean like just the city seal? Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. City of Northampton tree planting program. City of Northampton tree tree initiative um well, it, well just to give for your just for an fyi right so here i i'm not going to share it with you i'm just going to read this to you this is the quote for the actual door hanger so um 
It's called the die cut score for and glued with one pocket hanger hole inch and a quarter diameter so you can hang it over a doorknob. So if we were to get a thousand of them, it's seventeen hundred dollars. If we wanted twenty five hundred, uh, it is two thousand six hundred and twenty four. Um, for that, that is the die. That's the hanger. It's called the door hanger pocket folder. And the other item would be the trifold. If we did twenty five hundred of the printed trifold in color, is eight hundred and thirty nine dollars. Just for your information. Those numbers sound very ambitious for what we could actually follow up <laughs> on. Yeah, if we're going to get that many, we might have to take your name out, Rich. Take my name out? Uh, well, uh, yeah. To, you know, <laughs> a lot. That's a lot. But well, I, I'll be honest with you, Sue. I did take my name out of the document. Okay. <laughs> because I'm su succession planning is a good thing. So, you know, I, I was just half joking, but just the idea that it should be as evergreen as possible if we're going to spend these public resources on it. Yep. Nothing personal. No, I don't take it personally whatsoever. I, I have I have a shelf. I have I have a shelf life, you know. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's nothing is forever, right? Um, that's I mean, that's a lot of doors. Yeah, I mean, it is a lot of doors, and you, I guess we have like ten. We have ten thousand. There's ten thousand residences in the city, roughly. Ten thousand structures where people live in. Supposedly, I, I, I could be off by five or six hundred, but um, it is. I mean, we could just do the smaller amount, you know. But I'm so. For example, if let's say, for example, at Arbor Day, um, we end up giving away, you know, we give away the seven hundred whips, you know, hopefully you'll send along with each person uh, a setback brochure, right? So that's 700. Got it. Yeah. You know? yep. So it's that's kind of why. Force. Yeah, that's, that's kind of why. It's, Got it. I mean, I think for at least for the brochures, we should go with the larger amount. Yeah. And then um, the door hanger aspect, we could go with the smaller amount, like Rich and, and he has indicated that it's a lot of, that's a pretty ambitious. But I mean, you know, you could, you know, you could, you could canvas and ward pretty well and put out a hundred some odd setbacks, especially if they're places where we um we thought there were mm -hmm. setback locations. But but that's so that's sort of where I, where we're at with this right now. I was hoping to have a draft for you to look at so we could talk about it at this meeting, but I it didn't quite work out that way. But they do have it and I did get the quotes. Um and I did make the changes. I also um I asked them to get rid of all the check boxes. Um, and I asked them to change, um, the way that the species were, um, identified, you know, so it says elm cultivars and we just have one ginkgo, um, et cetera. I got rid of the winter king, um, fixed all of the, um, uh, fixed all of the, uh, um, urban forestry commission, um, items so you'll you'll see that all and we'll get to comment on them and if you want to make some further changes i'm more than happy to to make those happen but i would like to get them printed so we have them for the 26th rich could i could, did you ask dave at marcus printing about the uh a four panel or a bifold as opposed to uh no i did not and thank you for i will call him thank you for reminding me of four panel I don't know how, what the difference would be, but. Okay. No, I forgot to ask him. He called me today and I totally forgot. I, I'm sorry. Yes, but I can ask. He's very easy to reach. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Anybody have any, any, oh, one of the other things too, is that, um, I was playing around with the setback request button, right? The uh, forms G dot G L E M C W blah blah blah, and that actually um, that that we have to leave that in there because that gets you right to the form to fill it out. So if there's a QR code in here, it's you could you could just use your phone and 
and make it pop. And then I also asked if it was possible to um, underneath um, about the partners. So underneath um, Tree Warden, um, basically I put a line in there that says that please, you know, the tree, um, tree, uh, more information can be found on the Tree Warden's website. And then I listed the website and then I said, can you put a QR code there as well? And then I did. The, I asked them to do the same thing for Tree Northampton, so people could actually just get a QR code and go right to uh, all these different organizations. Um, I didn't do it for the Urban Forestry Commission because the Tree Warden page and the Urban Forestry Commission are all in the same; they're nested in the same place. But hopefully, hopefully they're able to do it. And again, we'll just see a proof of it. But do we need to make any more decision about the? Um, the trifled hanger, any kind of graphics on that? Or are you clear? Um, or? No, I mean, what I can do is I could ask them to put like the city seal on there and maybe put, um, you know, Northamp Northampton tree, uh, Northampton tree initiative or something of that, you know, you sort of want to make it generic. Okay, you're good. You don't, Why don't we just need say anything else? From us? Oh. No, no, I don't, I don't think so, but. Go ahead, Molly. Sorry. Why don't we just say Northampton Urban Forestry Commission? We don't have to say what's inside it because they're going to see what's inside it when they open it. Then we could, yeah, that and that's generic. So one of the things that um, I that is generic, and I agree with you. But one of the things that I also want to use this door hanger for is that um, I when I when we go to remove uh, trees or trim a tree in front of someone's house, I have really no way of contacting them with, unless I sit in front and knock on their door or I'm there when they pull up. So what I wanted to use is I wanted to get door hangers and actually create some kind of a flyer to slide in there that says, you know, hi, um, you know, I'm the, the tree warden was here today. We need to prune your tree and we like to do it three days from now. Because when you go to, when I go to try to find information about um, the residences, it's very difficult. A lot of times there's no telephone number. There's never any email address. It's just a mailing address. So I was hoping to just put something generic that talked about, you know, not just a specific branch of this initiative. So I could use multiple. Yeah. So I, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm fine with, I think we should put Northampton uh urban forestry initiative with the city seal or something i you know i you know something of that nature i think if you but, use urban forestry initiative that could cover like you know not just planting but like watering yeah. or if there's a drought or if there's some pest or if there's or if you want to go trim their tree you know yep. i think i think that's a uh, more generic have the city and i think it's important to have the city seal because you know, it's not like somebody's leaving voting materials or, you know, like, yeah, that, yeah. Okay. yeah, that it, it'll get it. To, oh, this is important. You know, like that's I, why I wanted to have that's why I wanted to have the commission word commission on there. Northampton Urban Forestry Commission. I think it's pretty clear from that, that it's an actual city body. And we could say from. You know, from the Northampton Urban Forestry Commission. So, so the only thing is, is that if we already put that on there and I was to use the same door hanger for something that's not related to the commission, which would be a tree removal or a tree trim, then people, oh. people would be confused. I'm trying, I was thinking of making oh, it a generic. I yeah. I was thinking of making it a generic so we could use it for everything. We could use it for stuff for the commission. We could use it for stuff for oh. the tree warden part. Why um, don't we just say from the Northampton um, tree warden? We, we we could i mean I don't, know. I don't know what i'll do is i'll have them put a mock-up of something on one then and they'll send us a proof of it and we can see it i'll send it to you i'll ask them to put a couple different things on there and see what it looks like it, it doesn't it doesn't really cost for them to do the initial draft design it's just a chain it, interchange of uh interchange of letters but yeah, I, I agree. I think it would be good to have something on there that could be identify what it is so someone just doesn't take the whole thing and just throw it into the rubbish, you know? Mm -hmm. 
Well, National Grid has had really good success with using this type of communication with people when they want to do tree work. Um, and they're, they need the resident to sign off uh, mm. to allow them to work on their tree to do line clearance or whatever, uh, if it's, you know, and it seems to have, it works well, but, you know. Well, we could say important information inside. <laughs> we get a lot of envelopes that say that, I know. I know, I don't know. Yeah, we could, I don't know. We, you know, we could say there's, you could say there's a, if you, if you open this, there's a dollar in there. I don't know. We could say <laughs> you know. I mean, sort of like when we, when, <laughs> when they would have, uh, when they would have the Nielsen ratings, right. They would, they would like, when I was a kid, the thing would come with a dollar and my father would be like, no, you can't have that. You can't touch that. That's got to go back. We're not doing that. You know, I can never understand that, but anyways, uh, um, but I, I would like to just yield a little time or just, uh, David, I, you sent an email earlier and I wasn't sure if it was related to setbacks. I, I apologize. I haven't read it yet. You mean about the freezer of magnolias? And yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think Jen might have, uh, originally directed our attention to an article about um, at McLeish Field Station, some Smith College professors are propagating Fraser magnolias. It's part of a climate change study. And I thought, you know, what, like, I think it would be good to partner up with Smith, uh, partly so that, you know, we can enlist the college kids in the tree planting efforts. But Maybe too, we could plant some Fraser magnolias, and they have a whole bunch of chestnut trees too, like thousands of them in a in a grove. That was the nature of the email. Okay, thank you. I again, I I did not, I wasn't able to read it uh, yet. I'm trying to actually find it. Huh. Um. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, we did on the brochure there, we just, like we agreed, we just, we took off the, um, the other and, um, we changed, you know, tr tree species, uh, varies, varies due to, uh, site conditions and what is available at planting time. So, but I, I still think, um, you know, I mean, I, I think, you know, as, as we have, uh, I think as we have grown as a as a group and uh, the initiative continues to be, um, you know, just seems to continue on, you know, these, but there's different iterate there. We, we are like, we would go through different iterations. We grow, you know, you retract, you grow. So, you know, I think it's, uh, I think it's a, I think it's great that we actually have to think about doing setback plantings. I think because we realize that we've, really populated the the city's tree belt um with a lot of trees uh and you know if you think about it the numbers in 2016 we asked Avery resource group to find 2000 planting sites and they did that and then we turn around and we filled 2000 planting sites now they were not all the same planting sites that davy um originally um indicated there are a lot of them but you know, we didn't ask them to do any uh, setback locations, you know, because we didn't want to, we didn't want to have them be on private property or, you know, having that kind of um, issue. But I, I think this is a good place to be. Um, not And I also think that we also have to think about pivoting. And I know that we've had a dialogue in the past about providing setback, um, you know, understory plant material. But I also think there's a level of a, a level that we might have to think that we, we have to sort of diversify in essence, you know, in order to actually continue to grow our canopy, even though um, smaller plant material, smaller woody plant material does not have um, individually the same benefits, but in mass, it has a lot of benefits. So I, I sort of think we have to sort of think like big, we just have to keep like that big 10,000 foot view hat on and think about this. So I'm glad we're going through this exercise and we'll get this squared, hopefully squared away. So, so I thank I thank you for everyone's um, input and assistance. And we'll just continue to marshal on. Um, okay, I'm actually I'm on time today. Marilyn would be very happy with me if Marilyn was here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, does anyone have any questions before we move on to the next agenda item? Sure. Yeah. Molly, I think you're on mute, Molly. Maybe. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, it, so would the next step with the setbacks be to identify which houses we're going to put the hangers on? Um, I would think that would be after we have the brochure finalized and everything. Yes. Yeah, but we could be doing that. I mean, while the brochure is being finalized, we don't have to wait. I mean, to like figure oh, out oh, where oh, we're yeah. going to put them. Yes, I think actually it would be helpful if uh, you were to, ex and you may have done this already, but extrapolate um, a, a data set, for, you know, addresses for us. So we could actually be prepared to maybe this summer. I don't know. I, and again, I, I, you know, we haven't really had this discussion about how we're going to market this. But, you know, how would we market this? Um, who would do the marketing? Um, you know, do we have enough volunteers to do that? Are you mean we, when you say marketing, you mean actually placing the things on yeah, the doors? Yeah. And then, you know, just, you know, thinking of the, the potential of uh, the amount of people that actually might be interested. And how we how would we manage all that? Um, who's going to help manage it? Um, those kinds of things, and that's probably a a conversation we should probably have, given the fact that I know Christina is not here, and I think Christina, correct me, Sue or Jenna, if I'm wrong, but Christina was is the lead person for the setback in Tree Northamptons realm. Yeah. Yes. I think it's important, sort of, to have. Sort of like what, um, sort of like the matrix that we put, Jen, you put together um, for, you know, the tree warden and tree, the planting activities and the pruning act, you know, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think we need to look at that and probably think about if we want to do some kind of a flow chart for this process, just so we know exactly who's going to be doing what and what the ramifications are going to be and, you mm -hmm. know, et cetera. Because in theory, if we were to go canvas a neighborhood as like a pilot, um, then we would, we would, we would do it. So we would have some setbacks for the fall. I don't know. That's what I was thinking, but I don't know what you're all thinking. Well, I also think we should um, like take a breath and figure out what, what area of the city would be the highest priority? You know, where, like, where the canopy is the le least or the, you know, if there's SJC areas, uh, is that the word, SJC? Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, it, I mean, to me, that's where that, it, like, we should, instead of just, you know, oh, here's a good place, you know, like, be a little mm. strategic about it and have a limited pilot and just, see like what you know so we don't have thousands of requests coming in and then we're like our pants are on fire and we can't really meet the need you know like just see so we can work the kinks out before we have too, too many you know that's just my operational hat on <laughs> yeah no, there's a couple I mean... of different ways to approach it i like the the social justice aspect or Molly was looking at the quarter mile radius approach. Are there others? Sorry, Rich, you started to say something. No, I was Molly, you had your hand raised. Yeah. Um, about that, the social justice communities, I'm guessing they probably are all or mostly within those quarter mile radii, except for Florence Heights, you know, most of the other ones. Well, all right. You're right. Hampshire Heights is another one, but that's sort of a, those are like another kettle of fish because it's Northampton Housing Authority. Um, but most of the social justice communities, you know, lower income neighborhoods are in the quarter mile radius, I think, either Leeds or, you know, downtown Northampton or maybe downtown Florence. I don't know. Is that maybe your impression, that's a good Rich? Place to start. Yeah. I mean, do you have a map that shows the outlines of what's considered social justice communities? Um, I don't have one. I mean, I could, I can easily get one. I is can, there a GIS layer for that? I believe there be? is, but it, I believe it's, um, I believe it's in uh, planning. Although, yeah, I would have to probably reach out to Carolyn. Because we could just overlay that layer on top of the quarter mile radii and just like where they overlap. 
Okay. There we go to start out with. And then also, so we could do that, but we could also do, let's say, I have to go and still collect those addresses on Ryan Road, but that Ryan Road part of Florence, that whole neighborhood um, besides Ryan Road itself, but the, a lot of the side streets they seem like they just don't have that many trees in some areas. Mm -hmm. um, so that could be another like cluster of streets, you know, yep. where there's a bunch of possible places. There are, I mean, R Rob and I um, made inroads there in certain places, but we found it to be difficult. Um, but that doesn't dissuade me from trying again. Um, and I think the way that that area of the city was um, constructed, um, we ended up with a lot of canopy loss in the very beginning because that was constructed in the uh, 40s and 50s and 60s. And it was just, you know, everything was cut down. And so what you see there is what's left right. from that era or stuff that people have planted and there's no sidewalk. So um, trying to figure out where the public right away is a little difficult, but there is most of those roads are 60 feet wide, so you can do it. But oh, I, okay. I don't oh. disagree. Yeah, I don't disagree. And I think that's probably the one of the wards that we've planted the least in. Yes. To look at our um, our planting by ward. I think it's ward six. Yeah. So, you know, and again, oh. it, it, it it's going to require, I think, a lot of interaction with um, a lot of interaction with residents and a lot of discussion and. You know, I think in the end, it's going to be whether the resident wants to rake the leaves or not rake the leaves. I, th yeah, I hate to say it, but that's sort of like what it gets down to. You know, right. are you really going to take care of this tree? The city can't, you know, patch the potholes in front of my house, but you're telling me you're going to prune this tree. How's that possible? Mm. You know, those are the kind of things that um, you will uh, run into when you're having these discussions with uh, with people, uh, unfortunately. So that's, you know, which I think... And the answer is that it's a, a different pot of money, right? It's a different pot of money. Different yeah, people I mean, it's, take an it, initiative. Yeah, it's a different pot of money. And I think, you know, I think the other thing too is people don't necessarily um, really understand the inner workings of this program. They don't understand that we have uh, all this volunteer support for all the pruning. Mm. Uh, you know, um, you know, we still and and of course the the pot of money we use to pay for the tree work for the big mature trees is stable. We're fortunate, um, but that is in my career that has not always been a given. Um, you know, and we've sort of shifted from the in house model to a contractor model to do that kind of work, and that's still in still like a work in progress. But you know, we're able to get things done. But I just. It is a. It can be a difficult conversation to have. It would be useful to, at some point, we could sort of make a list of bullet points of like, to we answer could. that question. We 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 could, we could at some That's point. Molly, mm -hmm. um, you had a question about a map, and um, I did a Google for Massachusetts environmental. It's environment. They call it environmental justice areas. Okay. And I couldn't load it because I'm having trouble with my internet, but um, it's like an arc GPS map or something. Oh, that's up what I your, want. Up your alley. Yeah, up my so alley. If you Google environmental justice, Massachusetts. Okay. It'll take you to an article and towards the bottom, there's a link to a map. Great. Thank you. you. All right. And you I'll can start that. making a list. I don't yeah. know. A wish yeah. list. And I will go and do the thing on Ryan Road. I need to collect the addresses there. So that's on my still to-do list, undone from last time. Okay. You, you feel my pain. <laughs> but to -do I said, you feel my pain, right? The oh, yeah. The oh, the to-do list. list. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Terrible. Ugh. I, I'll just say that, Molly, you know, a few years ago, you uh, – coordinated that effort where we we would go out and we would look for good setback sites with a piece of paper I, like I did uh, uh, a neighborhood in Leeds with Rich that's what I'm that was the quarter mile radius program all right all right all right yeah but but I thought you know I mean when you do this you have a strong sense of like a half dozen or a dozen places that would be really promising to set that so I think there's room for all of us to vote for 12 uh residences that should get the door hanger in addition to the EJ considerations. 
Mm -hmm. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, David, if you're okay, I'm going to, I'm going to forward that email that you sent to me today to everyone so they can read it. If that's sure. okay with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, just don't reply all please. Okay. Um, About the Magnolia. Yes. Issue? Yes. Yes. The other thing that I will just trying to find. Um, did everyone see Kent's email? And I know we're kind of deviating a little bit. But did you see Kent's email about the three uh, thirty three hundred rule? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw it. I that saw all. Okay. it, but I didn't right. have a chance okay. to read it yet. Yeah, me okay. too. All right. Well, when, when you have a chance, just check it out. It's really interesting. Um, Kent is always finding uh, very uh, just cool things to uh, talk about. And and while we're talking about setbacks, quickly. Um, I did receive an email from um, Tony Cosneros from the school department um, in regards to uh, David, you sent an email to the principal about planting trees for, I think it was going to be, would be the spring of 25. Well, yeah, originally it wasn't clear. Okay. But, uh, it, did, it, did you receive a response for that from that? Yeah. Tony, Tony responded um, and would like to do a walk. Uh, campus okay. walk through in July. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. That's great. Wow. That'd be awesome. That's so That's JFK. Yeah. yeah. And actually, if you, I mean, I could share the map that Chris and I just put together if you would like to see it. Yeah. I mean, I'd love to I mean see that. at yeah. some point, you know, Rich, Jen, I, I mean, you're definitely going to, going to weigh in. <laughs> it's, just, it's just it's just a matter of when you know you gotta gotta start the process somewhere right. and i found right. that starting with the principal is a good place to yep great um, thanks for doing that yeah well, you've I been actually... the only person that's ever had success <laughs> at school so or what yeah. the, so you got a formula you you know what you're doing <laughs> yeah whatever it is david i mean i've been here for 35 years and i haven't been able to do any of that so you're doing you're doing wrong. You're you're hired. I don't. I don't. <laughs> we're gonna find you a permanent position here. We're good. Um. Okay. Any other questions about the setback or anything related to that? So onward and uh, upward. I will have documents for you at our next meeting for sure. But I'll send you a proof prior to that. And again, if you see something that needs to be changed, just please email me um, singly. Um, okay, spring planting Arbor Day celebrations. So I'm going to turn this over to Sue. Okay. To talk about the press release and the Rotary Club folks. Okay, I don't have all my notes right here, but um, April 20, we're please mark your calendars. We need as many people as possible who are expecting experienced tree planters to be available on Saturday, April 20th, 9 a.m. or rain date Sunday. And this is for planting on Ice Pond Road with the Northampton Rotary Club. There once again, Barbara Devlin is um, taking on coordinating the volunteers. We've connected her with the residents of the neighborhood and she's um, signing up all the people who are willing to come out. It's really important that we have experienced people on these projects, as uh, most of you are well aware. We have, um, um, especially if we get a lot of volunteers, just to have that leadership is really great. And then um, they'll also have some Rotary folks who are interested in helping out giving away whips. Um, on Arbor Day, which I want to say is 26 and 27, Thursday, um, Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be looking for someone to cover the Saturday breakdown because I have an event out in Boston. Um, hopefully there's a couple volunteers who could who can handle that. I'll be personally reaching out to people. But we'll be giving away the whips as far as the press release goes. I started drafting that and um, March is flying by. So 
I'll get that to you, Rich. Um, try to get you that by the end of the week. Is that good? Yeah, that's perfect. Yep. Should we go to and the tree Northampton to sign up for Ice Pond Road? You'll be redirected to Barbara Devlin at okay. the Rotary. But but if you're oh, Rotary, yeah. wait, 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 let me back up. Have, have you been planting in the past year or so, Molly, with us? So you comfortable um, knowing like how to mix the amendments and all that um, stuff? A little. Not not a hundred percent. Yeah, we'll direct you to Barbara Devlin. All right. I mean, you're Molly, welcome to email you, Molly, me and I'll forward it along. Do you, okay. uh, do you like to uh, mix ingredients like baking a cake or something? I love to. Okay, yeah. then you're, you're golden. You don't need any training. <laughs> you're golden. And just give me the recipe. <laughs> it depends on how you feel. I know you've planted trees many times and you understand trees. It's just important that they don't get buried too deep. That's the no, big I know thing. about that part. I know about You're, the, you know, come, the crown going across like that. And so I just, Vicky, the amendment, you know, I'm not so sure about right. that. Vicki at, um, volunteer at tree Northampton dot at gmail.com. She's amassing the names of the leader people. Ah, uh, okay. Which I think you fall in that category really at this point. I mean, people who are just showing up and they yeah. have no, yeah. orientation whatsoever yeah, 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 yeah. yeah um and it's really common amongst the leaders to fall back on jen in particular rich parish yes and a couple other people like what do i do with these roots we don't right. know you know how much we often are trimming the roots because we'll have a a piece going you know a part of the root going in the wrong way and mm -hmm. sometimes it's a big substantial root and it's curved under and that's where you need somebody and there's sometimes yeah. there's no good answer but you need somebody with experience yeah to do that so you don't have to know every bit of it there's always okay. we always rely on each other sure. but just with those uh, welcome yeah. and be an ambassador and yeah i can do that plan it real deep <laughs> right or with roots that are you'll you can get the dirt off the roots and take a look at them before we put them yeah, in. Yeah, I know about yeah. all that. Yeah, Sue, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. Sue, how many trees are you talking about for that day, that project? Rich, help us out here. Are you doing a big bare root order and we're going to be planting and uh, days no. surrounding that? Or no, is it just no we're not. We we don't. Um, Jen and I had a discussion before Jen went. Um, oh, was it last week? I think the week before. We had a discussion about it. And we don't have the capacity the location capacity to do a bare root. Okay. Um, so at Ice Pond Drive, probably maximum of 14 trees. Okay. Um, we we did um we did go over to Ice Pond to look at the tree locations where they were removed. And then we talked to a couple of residents uh, or uh, one resident about there's an island there planting some trees in the island at the end of Ice Pond. But they suggested that we didn't do that because that's like the only open space that the younger kids have to play a grass area. There are trees there. It's just a really, it's a really bad planting. I think, but there's pines in there, Jen, and there's some other stuff, low um, woody ornamental plant material. that's just, you know, barely sort of maintained. Mm. Okay. So that's 14 trees. Did you say? Yeah. 14. Yeah. And then are you talking about a spillover site still, or are we going to try to keep it? Uh, Jen. So um, we did talk about um, po the possibility. It, 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 it's not as, you know, attractive probably, but um, a possibility of recutting the tree rings at Cooley Dickinson and, um, and having like a little bit of compost to sprinkle on the top and then putting mulch on top of those trees. Uh, I mean, on top of the ground, you know, remulching them. Um, but I don't, you know, I mean, that would be a very useful thing to do because those trees are a little, um, you know, they aren't quite grown as fast as, I, I don't know if it's really compacted there or, you know, but I don't know if we could just, show up there and do it will we have to 
coordinate with Cooley Dick or, you know, you uh, know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I think if we're going to do that as a spillover, I would actually email them mm -hmm. and just ask, just re, just say to them, we're going to have some volunteers come out on a Saturday or a Sunday um, to do some aftercare for the trees that are, you know, that are in um, that area in front of the uh, the new wing of the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, you know, unless we can come up with a different place where we can plant like 10 trees and I don't really see. I don't really see that. Um... I mean, off the top of my head, the only the one place could be um, Florence Fields along that back fence. There's a lot of room there, but there I is the, the problem with that is that uh, there is that is going to be packed with soccer people. Right, 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 right. right. So right. like we like during the Wednesday plantings, that's a great yeah, place yeah. to go. But on the yeah. weekends, it's not a yeah, very I've, conducive place to go. Right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Okay. So um, we're not talking anymore about, is it Route 66 as you go up by Hospital Hill? Uh, I, I still have to actually fi figure out how much property we own beyond the sidewalk okay. there. And I'm and still. And the other one was um, Village Hill we talked about. I mean, you know, there we we could do succession plantings there, but I think we discovered, and correct me if I'm wrong, folks that were at Village Hill because I wasn't there. Got it. It's it was, too. It was too difficult. Okay, I'm all for keeping it, was, it smaller. I think okay. um, my expectation is that since it's not a school project, we don't have as there's not a big newsletter going out recruiting volunteers. Okay. Um, and I'll communicate with Barbara that we're going to do one site and she doesn't have to really push a lot of people to get there. What the rotary people do is they get their children and, and grandchildren to come out mm -hmm. sometimes and maybe yeah. they don't need to do that. That sounds great. And, oh, I uh, do have, um, uh, two other comments about, look, okay. Um, okay. I, um, I uh, got the science teacher, Dan Moylan, uh, been communicating with him about bagging the tree whips. And we have a shoot for April 24th with a rain date is April 25th. Um, I think that'll, and you know, that's, we can work with that to bag the tree whips before. Um, so that's all set up. They're excited to do that. And I'll just handle that, you know, I can get the compost and everything. And um, that went really well last year. And then um, I, I have a question about we in the nursery, we have a whole bunch of uh, potted, I think they were from COVID, potted up uh, little, I think they're shrubs, uh, lilacs and stuff that, um, would it be possible to offer those at um uh arbor day at the tree whip giveaway you know a couple i know i could load some in my truck and get them up there and you know uh if if that's okay that's i'd be fine. happy to help with that too fine with me I there's would... also it's also a bunch of black there's also a bunch of black walnuts oh, oh. smaller ones yeah, they're in the pots. I mean, oh, we, we, that's we, what those are, black walnuts. Okay. Yeah. All right, we can yeah. um, we can make because I'd love to see just like whatever residual yep. Michigash down there. Like, let's mm -hmm. clean that out, and you know. Yep, agreed. I know we've been carrying those for quite a while, and if we don't do something, we're going to have to upsize their pots because they're going to. Yeah, be, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's just not so, really worth it. Yep. Okay, um, so I would say, should we put that in the press release or just put the those whips? Okay, because um, yeah, I agree, and I I still have some Dawn Redwoods. They're budding out, which is great. Um, that's not good. That's not I know, good. but it's too early. They're alive. <laughs> <laughs> that was my point of view. Ah, they're not dead, <laughs> but. But it is early. No, it's good. I mean, I think it's great. I I'm just like 
I'm, I feel like we're going to have a, a spring like we had last year where we had a hard freeze in May oh. and oh. We lost a, lot of, a lot of plant material was uh, destroyed. That was the or, latest or freeze. Yeah. That was really late. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of different trees in the tree. At least last year, there were all sorts of like smallish trees and pots and bags that they're not going to get healthier living yeah. there. No, I think, I think it's great. If we can, if we can move them out, let's move them out. I'll be more than happy to get them to wherever you want to be. Or, or the other thing too, is that I, I know in the past Sue that we, I think we, we had like a list of, uh, we would take a list of uh, trees or people that wanted trees that we didn't have or something at there we you take their their number and their information i can't remember i, I don't you know what that was was um some of the trees didn't arrive on time that's right that's so right Thank i you. made a big spreadsheet of everybody with yeah. their email and then i did it at my house right 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 thank you for like so, certain kinds of trees yeah yeah Jen. Just, to, just to like clean up the point of um mm -hmm. so we don't want to do the tree ring thing at um Cooley Dickinson as a how about I check or... with Barbara and see what the response is okay because we should we'll need like a leader there like somebody to you know my vision would be some container of you know compost or buckets of compost and you know maybe whatever a pile of mulch and you know I don't know how much we'd need, but you know. How about I check with Barbara? Because it would be nice to say in the press release that we're caring for trees too. Mm -hmm. And then then the next, but certainly before anything like that, we have to check back with Rich Tree Warden and make sure there's communication with the hospital and the go ahead and that that's okay yeah. to go on their property. Because ahead of time, we could get somebody to just like, neatly spray paint the rings you know so they would know how much to cut out because i've worked with students it, sometimes the rings are like you know not very yeah. nice not very symmetrical so we could get a couple volunteers to go out there with a, a rope and you know spray paint little dashed lines this is where the ring is supposed to be clear that out you know mm -hmm. but then there would also be stuff that would have to be picked up you know like the the turf or whatever that we take out you know yeah, you, you know what i would do sue is i would uh i'm sorry jen excuse me i would um probably put a dump truck in the parking lot somewhere and that way there you could just everyone could just dump the mulch sod everything in that one truck and just right. have have mulch in the truck or have mulch somewhere where people can just pull it out of a pile yeah so I, think, I think definitely we we need to i think um it would be great, Sue, if you reached out to Barbara and see if there was an yep. interest in that. It, if if there isn't, then we could, you know, we could do uh, uh, our own sort of work day there. Yeah. You no, know, Tree yeah. Northampton volunteers. Yeah, I think it's a high profile, compelling thing, um, which makes it so important that our hospital has trees around it. Yeah, agreed. I can I can sell that. I think. Okay. okay, okay. Those were my three things about arbor day i just wanted to that's i'm good on now thank you Molly. I, I have a question and a comment when you talk about the tree rings are you talking about the donuts on the ground that are around the tree yeah like like um i just had real a lot of success in other places i've worked where trees were not like you know really um you know growing super fast that we would just you know uh like cut the turf like shave the turf off in a circle around oh, the tree and make if a you bigger put, circle yes and if you just put a small amount of compost on the top of the ground before you put mulch on mm -hmm. it just infuses the soil with okay. biology yeah and yeah. it really it it just makes a huge difference so that makes sense i just didn't and know then, what what you meant yeah and then cover you know put an appropriate amount of mulch on right got it okay the other thing is just if you're looking for another overflow site from ice pond road maybe um 
Oh, I just had the name of it. Um, ah, hold on a second. Um, Grove Street, oh, Laurel. Grove Street and Laurel Street um, are just off of Route 66 area, um, like south of the community garden. Um, I don't know if you can see this. No, you can't. There. Yep. We've yep. been planting around there. That doesn't work so well, does it? No, yeah, but anyway. you get the gist. I, I, do you have a specific like address or do you just have a... No, just when I was on that street, Laurel Street, it just seemed like there's a couple of new houses in there and a yep. lot of open space. And I think, if I remember correctly, there's a sidewalk with a big, wide tree belt, I think. or And no wires. That was the thing. There's no wires there. Because they Morris, must be under Street. Well, we'll have to. I'll have to add that to my list to look at the overview. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what would be kind of interesting, actually, would be if we had our setback, if we had our setback hat on already. You know, it would be great to try to approach like um, L three. L3 Keo, is that what it's called? The oh, yeah, that place, Periscope yeah. Company. And, you know, because if we don't have the planting room behind the sidewalk there, we could, mm. you know, we could ask them if we could do setback plantings. That's uh, a good idea. Because there's only one, there's, I think there's only one elm left on that side, original mm -hmm. elm tree. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, they have a lot of plant material in that campus up farther by where their entrance is, but there's not a lot of plant material as you go down the hill. Um, yeah, there's a big, wide, grassy area with nothing yeah. in it. Yep. Like so, along the sidewalk. My pitch there was that yes. people use that sidewalk. They, that, both, you know? both, and they're both. actually, their their whole campus was planted with native plants. Everything in there is native. Yeah. Really? That they installed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. There's they did a really nice job. Yep. They have yep. a whole bunch of plantings up away from the road, I've noticed. Yeah, they're like at the top of the hill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By the parking lots and yeah. Yep. So I mean, I, I I think Jen, let me let's let's revisit that area. Let me pull up a map tomorrow, and um, I I'll just you and I will just be in touch about connecting. Okay. Um, and the yep. the other thing too is that Ice Pond Drive is all set to go. We, the stumps have all been ground, um, and they've been loamed. So it's been dig safe once. For that now we'll have to dig save it again once we go up there and stake it all out um okay i'll i'll be in touch with you about that okay perfect yep yep and then um but, uh, just uh on a side note like an administrative note um we have a new uh we have a new trench permit system that we're still sort of exercising so um it will be um and i'm working with um uh, I think it's Tom Bassett is the one that's collecting the data for the tree planting location. So th there's a little, there's a few um, minor glitches, I think, that just need to be ironed out. Uh, and I'm going to probably end up doing some of the permits to start with just to see, to make sure like the information that Tom is feeding us actually is um, going to be able to fit into the new system. You know, like the photographs, the addresses, because the thing with the trench permit system, the trench permit system is electronic now, so it has to be completely accurate. So if you have an address, uh, sometimes the numbers on the house address actually don't match the numbers in the actual system. I found this a lot with DigSafe. So um, if you're doing like a wide range of uh, locations, uh, like, you know, from point A to point B in a street, it's easier. When you're doing individual ones, it can be a little difficult. So, So I'm still trying to get through that but um we should be good for our planting locations and then have i also you talked to him no, sorry, I you talk... oh, okay. no i haven't no no i haven't uh because internally we i had the dig safes done and then um i um we were working with uh i was working with another person who can't actually doesn't have the time to enter the data for, into the into uh, from another department who was helping us doesn't have the time because it takes a little longer to enter permits into the system. Again, it's like, it's something new. So we're just going to work through it. Um, I did, bon Be Bonnie did tell me earlier that there, if there are two residents 
on uh, North Maple Street. One wants a particular tree and the other one doesn't want any tree. So I have to reach out to, because North Maple Street had locations that were staked for this mm -hmm. last safe. So I need to go out and sort of see what's going on with those. I'll try to get to those this week. So we're not leaving the folks hanging. Um, and that's really all the update I have. And okay. then, and then the one other thing too, sorry, I keep talking is that Jen and I are going to go, uh, to the nursery, Amherst nursery. And, and we've got to go like probably next week and just, we're going to tag a bunch of trees. Um, so I can actually start working on our, um, our purchase from them for this, this spring. Excellent. So, so even though we don't have like all this, all these sites lined up, we are going to do what we've done in the past, which is buy quantities of species that we, that have worked for us that um, have fit in, that are, can do multiple, um, fit in multiple locations. And go ahead, uh, uh, Sue. I'm sorry. I'm going to meet with Jen Friday. I'll talk to her about this, but um, I'll put together a list of wish lists trees that have been requested or that we decided we wanted to plant a certain species in a certain place yep um and then so you'll have a list to go um with there was one yesterday for a um monroe street cherry tree which i know we don't have no we don't have any cherry trees in stock there's a bunch of little things like that where yep we i have a google doc I started that I can share with you. Um, okay. Kind of like, I don't know if it's the format that you want it, but I, um, I'll, I'm writing myself a note right now. I'll, I'll share that with you. And we'll meet Friday and yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's tomorrow. <laughs> no, day after tomorrow. <laughs> you're, you're pushing it. So it's not Thursday. Yet. It's I know Thursday. we have another meeting tomorrow. The okay. tree another tracker Friday. meeting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that, so, I mean, I think, uh, we're on, uh, we're on track, you know, again, with, with the full knowledge that we are taking our time to just go methodically. Any other questions for the spring planting? Does anyone have any, uh, I mean, I'm going to leave the same items on the agenda. I'm sorry. It's like three meetings in a row. I hope people are not, um, bothered by that but i figure we we have you know we have old business that needs to be taken care of so if you're all okay with it i'll just leave it the way it is okay rich Parrish, do you wanna did you have an agenda item that you wanted on there well like a just pruning report yeah for for next the next meeting on the agenda put the uh, the pruning season summary okay how many, how long, how long do you think you'll need? Oh, max 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, and I did actually, Rich, when you were gone on vacation, I actually met with uh, uh, Bob Haxby and I went all through Village Hill and walked all over the place yeah. with him. And we talked about some of the trees that he identified that he wanted to prune, which I was fine with um, and sort of just, which was great. I spent, couple hours up there with them so um they did do some pruning while you were gone yes yeah and i've got all that information so okay all right pruning season summary 10 minutes next meeting okay um anything now this is the time when uh there are you know any, any items not anticipated by the chair that you might want to discuss any announcements of any kind okay all right. Do do people want to? Does someone want to adjourn the meeting? We're ten minutes. We have ten minutes. Is there nothing going once, going twice? Bonnie's looking. I at move to adjourn the Bonnie. meeting. <laughs> Bonnie's I got the go. camera on. Bang! It's on. <laughs> I move. Bonnie's good. But Bonnie's good thing you're here to let us know what time it is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, we have a motion on the floor to adjourn the meeting. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Uh, any discussion? No, seeing none. All in favor, raise their hand. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you. Appreciate it.